South Water in Clash. Uh, and uh, the first of the contenders is our favourite, Chautauqua. Loves Flemington. 1,000 metres, no concern. I can see him stalking the speed. By all reports, he's in for his best preparation. Narrowly defeated in the Dali Classic when he had, I think, the worst run of the three contenders coming through that race. I think he's the testing material. He's got a turn of foot that is breathtaking when let down. Dwayne Dunn uh, for mine on board Chautauqua will be the winner. Here's number two, and that is Terra Vista. Well, he has an outstanding first up record. Six starts for the five wins and the one minor third. You know, he's a Group 1 winner here at uh, Flemington over the six furlongs when he won the new market and beat and the likes. Um, his last won a 1,000 metre race back in 2013. So, uh, look, he, he's a horse that likes to get back with Tatakwa. He's got an amazing turn of foot. Joe Pride, he's right on song. He's trolled up nicely. He looks nice and bright. He's still a little bit uh, furry for me in the coat when you look at some of these other runners. But um, he's a star. He probably prefers 1,200, and I'm going to argue and take a set against Delectation that I think he'd be better suited at 1,200 as opposed to the 1,000. There's a big chance in the new market in a couple of weeks' time, but I'm going to take a set against him. He's a Group 1 winner. He won the Darley Classic at his last start. One of five Group 1 winners out of the uh, six runners. He deserves his place, but I think he might be a tier below. There's no doubt that number four, Var Pensiero, is a tier below. He's the only non-Group 1 winner in the field could this entire by stratum cause a boil over to around 100 to 1 horse number four well he's a speed horse and he can and he can probably lead this field and and control it out in front over the thousand uh it's a huge step up for him to race against these um five-time group one winners in opposition but oh look he's there to look if he can run in the first five he's going to get some nice prize money he still gets paid anyway for running in this race so it's, it's nice it's a nice position to be in here's the uh, three-year-old colt he is running for a step. He's arguably already got it as a winner of a Golden Rose. That was 1,400 metres. He's the new sprinting sensation. All, and no horse can trial better than what he's trialled in prep for this. James McDonald comes down to Sydney specifically to ride him. Can he handle the straight, though? We've got to put a line through his uh, straight track run here at Flemington over the spring in the Coolmore because the outside of the track where he came down in that lane was off that day. Correct. It was hot up on the fence. He faced the breeze, so I'm, I'm willing to forgive him for that. Uh, for, for, for me, he's built like a straight horse. He's big, he's demanding, he sprints well fresh, the 1,000 metres, not a problem. He's the three-year-old colt. He's the gun on the way up. And there's the other three-year-old in Japanese. Me, you spoke about the Coolmore. Well, he had all the advantages, didn't he? Because he came up on the inside. It's been a tumultuous couple of weeks for Glenn Schofield. Just when you underestimate him, he will be uh, fighting back here. He's on uh, Chris Waller's um, $8 chance here in Japanese. Me for mine. Exosphere um, can defeat Japanese me today. All right, they are that's come in. Japanese me 9.50 into seven, Terra Vista, $8 into six. So Exosphere is now out to $3, but our worst result will be Chautauqua, the favourite. Strap yourself in. This is going to be awesome. I'm with Chautauqua. Chautauqua for me. Uh, Terra Vista's no value, but Japanese is the value for me from the Waller stable. And delectation goes forward. Terra Vista's the value for me. Chautauqua to win. Here's the Black Caviar Lightning Stakes. Now, Vapensiro looks to have got up in the barriers here. He reared up and the jockey was out of the saddle for a moment there. And now they've had to back Japanese out of the line. He was drawn alongside of Vapensiro. A little delay here and uh, there'll be many, many punters saying, oh, the 100 to 1 pops caused uh, others to be upset. Now, Simon Marshall, we're, we're both with Chautauqua. Wayne Dunn sitting on board. What are you saying to him just to keep him calm and relaxed? Well, t um, look, all you're doing is just uh, calming him down and talking to him in a kind voice. Uh, hopefully, um, uh, Vapensiero will get vetted very quickly. Uh, he's a pretty cool customer, uh, Chautauqua. Sometimes, um, uh, early in his career, he used to get a little bit hot uh, when he was in the gates, but they'll have a barrier tendon up there. Hopefully, that uh, the jock will jump on very quickly here in Craig Newitt. They'll load these back. Nizmi will uh, load up as well. Um, he'll have a he'll have a trot up in front of the vet here with the barrier attendant uh, leading him around as he lets him go right there. This is the first leg of the Global Sprint Challenge, so up for grabs there. Ten races across four different countries to win a one US dollar bonus. You need to win three of the ten races in three different countries. That's what Chautauqua is going for. 
to win this race. Uh, then he'll be heading over to Hong Kong and then to Royal Ascot to uh, search for that bonus. Has to win this first. Here's the Black Caviar Lightning Stakes. And again, they're ready for the Black Caviar, and they're off. Exosphere just took a bit of a left-hander at the start. Chautauqua drops in for the trail lead. Varp and Zero away flying. And they split in divisions here. Varp and Zero leads out Exosphere. And they're coming towards the middle to inside. And out on the grandstand side, Japanese shows the way from Terra Vista Delectation. And Chautauqua last of the four out on the grandstand side. 600 left to go. And they're two divisions wide, wide apart. But on this side, Japanese showing the way. And I'd say he's the overall leader in the race from Delectation. Terra Vista, Chautauqua clear air on the outside. The far side now, and uh, McDonald's getting going on Exosphere. He's gone past Varp in zero, but can he get into the race? Japanese Malik's Terra Vista at the 200. Chautauqua struggling to get near them at the moment. Exosphere's putting in a big run on the far side. Terra Vista's burst through in the middle, 100 to go. Leads from Japanese Exosphere. Chautauqua's flying home. He's flying. They hit the line of photo. Oh, Chautauqua dived at Terra Vista in a close go. Japanese will be third. Back behind them, Exosphere. And Delectation and last in Vapen Zero. Have we got there? Photo will tell us. Last time, Chautauqua to grab Terra Vista. And he's got there by a nose. Woo. Now, he has got there wow. right on the line. In the last 100 metres, the race has changed complexion. Dwight went to work on Chautauqua and can you believe it? Look at Wayne Hawks. He's got a wry smile. He shakes his head. This horse means a lot to them. Dwayne Dunn uh, charges late. Damien Oliver with Terra Vista looks home. Japanese in the middle has run third and right on the line. This exciting sprinter over a thousand metres and Dwayne Dunn nails them. His Brilliant. last 300 has got to be off the Richter scale of sectionals that he's had to run. Exosphere might be the story of the race. He's followed by Pensiero, James McDonald on uh, Exosphere across to the middle of the track. Not the place to be. We saw a straight run uh, early in today. Straight race run early today that uh, the winner came down where Japanese me leads here in the All Cerise. Watch Damien Oliver in the orange folks. Something gets caught. His hands, his whip. Something gets caught. He tries to change it through or go for the whip and he just gets stuck a little bit. Watch the uh, jockey on the right hand side. Damien Oliver. Colors. Right there. Oh, oh. He dropped it once, twice, three times. Then he picked it up. Lucky he was able to grab it. But he comes to champ. Down the outside. First up fresh. Just like he did at Mooney Valley when he oh. won in an impossible position off the bend. Superstars win like that, folks. That was exciting. It was a three-way go. Japanese was an uh, awesome ollie. He's won 104 Group 1s. And he's fuddled and he's muddled in Group 1 races. He just uh, won something went wrong there. He just didn't get it right at his best. He'll be spewing. But... It's great to see this horse win, isn't it? Oh, it is fantastic. I, I just love his racing style. A thousand metres he got back. I can't wait to see the sectional times. His last 200 metres, he literally flew. And Dwayne Dunn would have a smile from ear to ear as he joins Sam Hyland. Dwayne Dunn, Chautauqua. This horse is just a complete jet, isn't he? Oh, he's a good horse. You know, I hope the crowd were excited because <laughs> where it was from my seat, it wasn't... <laughs> wasn't real pleasant for a while but gee what about the turn of foot late and his endeavor to hit the line and a good little monkey to get off my back you know john gave me great confidence before the race to go back and and just keep him out, out on his own and uh, when they split in the middle it was like oh what do we do now but the best horses were on the outside so i thought i'd go that way and he just lives for you under pressure i mean he's just he just loves it late yeah as as um john said to me he said listen ride him like the valley um if you're going to win, you're only going to get them in the last 50 metres. And, uh, you know, you've got the horse underneath you. You know, if he gets beat that way, so be it. But uh, we've hopefully got the world to conquer this time with him. And, uh, gee, spelled really well. And missing Hong Kong's probably been a blessing in disguise. Rupert Lee has had the running double here. And obviously him and fellow connections so, get, put so much trust in the Hawks team to place him like he has. I mean, he's just, they've been so patient with this horse and they, they get the best out of him every time. Oh, absolutely. You've got to realise he's only really very lightly raced and he's, you know, he's still got some things that he's been doing wrong and uh, today he just showed his true class. Well done, Dwayne. Oh, what a win. Uh, as we look at the head on, look at Dwayne Dunn, how patient he is, the widest runner with the uh, blue colours and the gold cap. He starts to ask for this grey for the ultimate effort. He accelerates Japanese me. Look at Damien Oliver on the inside. He's fuddling and fiddling for his gear. Where is the whip? I'm right asking here. for drop, the ultimate effort. Drop, I can't find drop. the whip. Oh, got it.
spotted. Oh, thrilling scenes, and right over the top comes Chautauqua. Oh, what a race. The great racing continues. Uh, Three-year-olds up next in the Hobart field. And also we'll hear from Wayne Hawks uh, representing Team Hawks, the trainers of Chautauqua. Enjoying the uh, Saturday afternoon racing, and racing does not get any better than that. The flying machine, Chautauqua, storming over the top to win the Black Caviar Lightning Stakes. What a win, and he'll be heading towards the TJ Smith, which we'll be able to see, of course, live and free here on 7, part of the championships. And then he'll head to Hong Kong and look for this big bonus. He pays $2.40 and $1.50. Terra Vista second, Japanese me in for third, and uh, number five, Exosphere runs fourth. Let's catch up with Wayne Hawks is with Neil Kearney. That was about as close as it gets. Whew. I'll never replay that again. It's, uh, it's no good for the heart, that stuff. Good for racing and uh, good for the good for the public, but uh, yeah. Well, there's a thousand metres, see, and he was his most vulnerable, and I could probably say it now. When they went out, Rupert Lee said, what do you reckon? I said, well, it's not the end of the world if he didn't win today. I mean, of course, he was trying and everything, but it was always going to be his most vulnerable being over a thousand. And, you know, two weeks ago, I honestly wouldn't have thought we'd actually be here today because the, the lighting was coming around very quick. So we knew we were fat and soft and underdone. And as I said, I'm only saying that now because we've... Uh, got the job done but uh yeah no, it was just great to uh, he delivers doesn't he yeah he does just that, that last couple of strides what you got to realize is the quality of horses that he actually had to run down you do that in the lesser races you don't do that with 200 meters to go when you when you're taking on fairly good proper group one horses and that's what those two horses are both those horses have got exceptional form up the straight so to, to for the 200 winning post to watch it live it was uh it was great stuff thanks Wayne. thank you